Welcome back to the EU West Challenger Series number 4. I am Dignitas Stress, joined by Spuddington for the first series of the day, which is going to be Isuba versus Tricked, and we're heading rapidly into game number 1. It is just about to finish loading for me, and uh, what are your thoughts on these team setups to begin with, Spuddington? Well, it's going to be interesting. I, from my perspective, a lot of the information that, right, that Tricked have, essentially, Sorry, I'm just getting very confused with my words here. Tricks have a lot of potential starts here. They have a lot of potential setups for their lanes. They could really swap up almost any lane with any other lane. Nautilus could start at any point on the jungle, and that's actually going to make it very, very difficult for Isuba to predict where they're going to need to be applying pressure with their own jungle, where they're going to need to be swapping their own lanes. And obviously, if you can get an advantage, if you put yourself in a situation where the enemy is forced to swap, that's going to cost them experience, that's going to cost them farm, and obviously, Tricked would be put one step ahead if that were to happen. Question... It's a question that might actually be answered, though, by a level 1 invade. I wouldn't be surprised to see something coming out. Even though they probably actually have a weaker level 1 fight, I wouldn't be surprised to see Isu, but at least trying to put in some aggressive wards in the enemy jungle. Um, we have actually got a pause coming out right now, but if you do get that ward um, placed down, then that gives you an advantage in that you can just get that information you can know where the jungler started you can know where he's likely to be going where he's wanting to gank all these kinds of things are, are super nice to know and obviously knowledge knowledge is power you know uh, some kind of platitude like that anyway but uh, just going to be jumping to live when this happens what's your kind of views as well stress uh, I'm very excited to see this Quinn uh, that's been picked up in this game. I, I agree though that it's going to be very difficult for uh, for Isuba to predict exactly what, sorry, for Tricked to predict what is going on in this game. And uh, one thing that maybe people aren't too sure about is this Quinn pickup and we can quickly run through what Quinn's kit includes. Uh, the passive from Quinn Harrier is going to mark targets on the map. You'll see that come down. It's kind of like a little target that'll go above their head on minions and champions. When Quinn auto attacks that, it'll do more damage to that target. Blinding Assault is Quinn's Q that will blind the target it hits and deal a little bit of damage as well. Heightened Senses will reveal an area around Quinn as well and do a, a, quite a few passive little things like uh, increase movement speed and increase attack speed as well. We're going to see Demon Spirit just warding up that top tribe Bush, but uh, the fact that the supports up there might indicate something to trick us in a lane swap but we do have Quinn down in the bottom lane so not exactly the uh, most standard place for people to be right now but we'll see how this moves 
as it goes on. We do have a disconnect, so I was expecting that pause to come up, which allows me to go back to uh, talking a little bit about Quinn. Uh, Vault is Quinn's E. You'll see her jump into the fight and then go to the maximum attack range from the target. Uh, that'll allow her to gap close very easily. And then Tag Team and Sky Strike is the ultimate from Quinn. That'll turn her into Valor, which will be a melee range. Uh, it, it's Is it an eagle? I can't remember the exact bird of it. My uh, ornithology skills are amazing. But, bird? Uh, it, it'll be a bird. We'll, we'll go with a bird. Um, which will have melee range and increased, uh, increased movement speed. But obviously being melee range is not always ideal for an AD carry, so as she ba as Valor backs off, you can reactivate Tag Team to use Sky Strike, which will bring down a, a hail of arrows from the sky and deal some extra damage. So those of you that maybe haven't seen Quinn yet, that is what you're looking out for with Quinn in this game. Yeah, Quinn is obviously not something you see a lot of, but she does have some very unique aspects. Obviously, her damage in the early game is very, very high. Uh, she does obviously have that range issue though, and she also has a blind. The, having a blind, if you can land it, when you're basically going to be taking damage mostly from auto attacks, because you're up against an enemy AD carry quite often, that is huge. That allows you to really just absolutely mitigate so much damage. But it is a skill shot, can be blocked by minions, so it's going to be an interesting skill matchup to see if she can apply herself to the right position at the right time. She also has a lot of kind of burst damage early on, but her sustained damage for an AD carry is actually not that brilliant. Quinn in when when Quinn is in Valor form, she actually has like a passive attack speed bonus. But um, when she's in human form she's actually it's conditional upon landing those those Harrier strikes, those um uh empowered auto attacks upon a vulnerable target obviously if you don't have that attack speed bonus you're not going to be doing nearly as much damage as you would normally like but we are going to be seeing her getting a little bit of a level advantage going actually it, it is looking like it's just going to be straight up bottom lanes i'm a little bit surprised actually that trick hasn't gone for a swap up here but i guess they must have some kind of rationale for it well, I, I think up in that top lane, as you said, I'm a little bit surprised because Renekton's just notably a, a lane bully. He's so difficult to shove off the lane, so depending on how they play this with their jungler, with their mid laner, they've obviously got quite a lot of roam potential. Nidalee's very difficult to stop roaming once she hits level 6, and Nautilus with the hook as well is going to be able to keep people in place and also uh, go around the map just a little bit quicker because, of course, it reduces the cooldown when you use it on terrain, but... Uh, Carrie, the Johnny's actually going to zone out tricked Niels here in the bottom lane already. And uh, if they can keep them away from getting level 2, that might be a good advantage for uh, Isuba here. Because as you said, that blind in lane is going to allow Isuba to trade a lot better. But as it pushes into the turret, Niels does reach level 2. And we can see in the mid lane, maybe Jarvan's looking for something up in the enemy jungle. But there are good wards out already from tricked. Yeah, also, you actually saw him jumping over the Baron Pit wall. He jumped into the enemy jungle but landed straight on a Nidalee trap. So obviously they were ready for that kind of angle of attack and that was very nicely played. Wasted a lot of Jarvan's time. He walked all the way up Baron Pit, all the way back down again, did jump into the enemy jungle and it kind of put him at risk. If, if Tricked had been in position, they might well have looked to gank in there. Obviously they weren't in quite the right spot though and obviously um, Nidalee isn't really the best early game fighter. She really needs to get some levels on her Q. She really needs to get some uh, AP before she'll really start hurting, although she really will start hurting. Yeah, it's a little bit worrying for Shen right now because Renekton managed to get himself about 7 CS in the lead already. Went back, has bought another Doran's Blade, so he's going to be hitting Shen even harder in the lane already. And Shen hasn't been able to use that time uh, as effectively as he would have liked to have catch up on CS. He's only now catching up and Renekton is back in lane, so Renekton will just keep trying to bully him out. Shin does have that level advantage, which is obviously going to give him uh, a very slight advantage over Renekton, but as soon as Renekton hits level 4, I'd expect to see him put the harass back on. Yeah, he's going to get aggressive almost any second. He is, in fact, there we go, getting that uh, Ruthless Predator down, doing the Cold Meek, doing the extra that auto attacks, and you can see Shin already having lost a good... 25% of his health there, that's that's significant. Shen does not sustain particularly quickly. He will just keep himself alive, just kind of... He's he's it all, It's almost like he has higher passive regen, but it's, that's not actually what causes it. He uh, has some sustain from his Q. 
but uh, it just kind of comes out very very slowly very very gradual but we do potentially see trashy here looking for the gank up top there are no wards from uh, renekton and it does look like he might get caught out here. Is this going to happen? He does have his E available. That has put the stun down. But now he's been taunted. Now he's getting rooted. He is going to be able to jump out though. Getting a lot of distance between them. The anchor is still available. Does look like Tricked aren't going to go for it though. Nautilus just going to back off into the brush. And then back out of the lane. But yeah, and he didn't even burn his flash in that engagement. So while it was a nice amount of pressure. Renekton is already 11 CS ahead again. And didn't burn his flash. They're going to have to pressure that top lane a lot if they want to try and take them out, but there's not all that much damage between a Nautilus and a Shen right now. Uh, they're really going to end up needing Nidalee to come up to this top lane after level 6. Yeah, she's not going to have the damage at the moment either. As has mentioned, it's very much a, a, a composition which isn't going to hit any kind of serious power until level 6. Obviously, Janna as a support early game, not particularly special. She's got a shield, which is nice, but... Um, the small disrupt on her Q and the small slow on her W, not particularly great. It's really her ultimate which defines her. Obviously, she does put out a lot of CC overall, but nothing too huge. And we do potentially see Trashy once again coming for this Renekton. Still has that E available, though, and it does look like he's not intending to ever really waste that. There's no reason for him to do so. He has actually now been taunted now. He's going to be going for that, but just... Flat out missing the uh, flat out missing the the hook there. Yeah, and again, not even a flash burn. So they're spending a lot of time and a lot of effort on this top lane, which is essentially uh, not going so well for them at all. And none of the lanes really are working out exactly like Tricked would like them down in the bottom lane. You can see it's already a 20 CS advantage for Quinn over Ezreal and especially when you consider that Quinn is uh, likely to trade a little bit better in those uh, small engagements with that blind. Of course Mystic Shot isn't really affected by the blind at all so uh, there's a lot of potential for harass onto Quinn but provided they're playing the lane right and keeping around minions you know it's gonna be difficult to get Quinn off the lane as well because that 20 CS advantage is huge at seven minutes into the game. That's more than a kill's worth in gold, and it does look like we have potentially got the Jarvan gank coming in. Sona will hit six fairly soon, so will Quinn, and they, that actually gives them a heck of a lot of all-in potential for any bot lane to contend with. Um, Janna is not going to hit level six until after they have, so there is a lot of potential if they get that lane pushed out again, which will happen soon. The tower is shredding through those creeps and actually denying Ezreal quite a few of them. They are going to hit six very soon. It's going to be interesting to see if they go for this. They have got uh, a Nautilus hanging around, just a blue buff right now. Going to be donating that to uh, to Jess's. We'll be picking up that buff, and we have actually got the blinding strike going down on Israel, who's taken a bit of damage. But I don't feel like at the moment they really are going to be using that window of opportunity to go for that damage, to go for that gank, uh, go for that kill in the bottom lane. But uh, just just kind of keeping an eye on it because as I mentioned they have a lot of burst and they have a lot of CC as well yeah and you saw in that trade uh, they managed to land you know some damage onto Quinn but with Sona being around just the sustain from Sona makes it very very difficult for Ezreal because if he doesn't get the damage from his auto attacks essence flux and mystic shot he's already missing out quite a substantial amount and uh, you can see Quinn using that heightened senses to her ability, making sure that Nautilus isn't hanging around in their tri bush. It actually gives a significant radius of uh, vision there. And you can see that Javan once again trying to make plays up in towards the top side of the jungle, but did walk over, I believe it was crossed over that ward in the mid lane. And he's going to head up towards the top lane. It has been warded in tri bush, so uh, Nezrelis is going to be able to get out of there. I mean, he must know he's there. He's sat on a ward, so uh, going to play this one safe, but there's already a a significant advantage for Renekton up there. You can see Nautilus has joined them down in that bottom lane. Uh, Quinn and has been forced to use Valor, uh, sorry, tag team to make her into Valor. You can see the bird there on the screen looking uh, very majestic. And now it sounds like we're doing a nature documentary. Um, <laughs> and it's lovely, then, isn't it? Nice. Now you see in its natural habitat, uh, the uh, phoenix, which has now turned into a person who is dressed very flamboyantly instead. But we had, yeah, not a successful gank there from Nautilus. It is definitely true though that the tag team is a very long cooldown, especially at round 140 seconds. And actually at top we've got Shen getting uh, the damage down. He has actually taunted 
heard in under that tower, but it's not going to be enough. That ignite is still ticking, but unless Nidalee can chase him down, which might happen, she has obviously got quite a lot of movement speed. Effectively, it's going to be whether she can... Oh, blimey. I was expecting her to go for the spear there, but actually she just flashed. Flashed to take down, and that was easily enough to do the damage for Renekton. So, first blood pick up by that Nidalee there. So, she's off to a good start. Has got that tier already on 268 mana. It's... It's... Probably going to make up for some of that laning, some of the laning mishaps that Trick have had thus far. Yeah, it will go a little bit of the way to making that back, but even though she's got that kill, she is 23 CS behind in lane, which uh, obviously nearly not the best farmer again before six. She's just a champion that relies on having that cougar form to to do a lot of her work. Um, and Oriana is just farming so easily with that command attack and uh, dissonance is just pretty much shredding through the wave, shoving it into Nidalee, and she deals with uh, pushing in the early game not that well because she doesn't have a lot of AoE until she can get into Kuka form, use that uh, takedown and uh, we see all the rest of her abilities as well. Yeah, obviously it's going to be proving a little bit difficult and now it seems like both of the junglers are just taking turns not really achieving very much. Both of them just hung, hang, hanging around that mid lane looking for something to happen but both of those lane is just a little bit too safe, a little bit too pushed back. But now we have Jarvan in that bottom lane. He is actually potentially going to look for the Sona, putting down the power cord, putting down the Q, putting down the damage here. Can they actually... That lane will push of its own accord. So it's interesting to see whether Jarvan goes for this. They have got a ward. If he goes for the next brush, I don't know, however, if, if Jarvan... <sighs> If they're actually aware that that ward was placed in there, because it's always possible that Janna went in there to put the ward down and was not seen, though they could infer simply by seeing the fact that her ward had disappeared. I imagine they know, but the question is whether they can make something happen. We have actually got the Flash Crescendo coming in. We have actually also got the Blinding Strike. We have got the Monsoon, though. Just going to cancel that out. Very nicely played indeed. Yeah, and that's a lot burned there out of Isuba, and they didn't really manage to get what they would have liked. It is going to open up the dragon for them, and there was a ping out of Tricked. Meanwhile, it uh, looks like Oriana has been taken quite low behind her tower in Italy. Uh, still on about half health, will be able to use that heal as well to get herself back up to full. There is a pink ward over the ledge opposite the dragon pit, and it looks like Tricked want to pressure this, but I'm not sure with uh, Ezreal on... Ooh, actually, I didn't realize Javan was quite so low on health. He has been picked up by uh, another attack from Dragon, and that has backfired horribly for Isuba. Javan got taken so low while doing that Dragon that Ezreal pretty much just came in. There it was a true shot barrage as well, managed to chip him down, and Dragon finished him off for the kill. Yeah, now we actually have got that Quinn putting down some damage on Janet, but having to just... Oh, Barry, it does actually keep him just about alive for just another second, but not going to be enough, and uh, obviously disintegrated and burned off at the same time. Was killed by Pulsify Ezreal, that being the thing. But yeah, as you say, Jarvan just... I don't think it was even necessary for him to tank as much as he did on that dragon, but... Yeah, he certainly went for it, and we have actually got Herdin now going back in on that top lane. He is going to pop that Dominus, going to be putting down some damage, but I don't think he's got the damage to really take him out. Nautilus is coming in from the side. He could get that anchor down. He has put the depth charge in instead. We have got the Ignite coming out, and that is going to be a dead croc and a dead Nidalee in mid. I didn't even see what happened there. Yeah, we didn't quite catch on to that, but I think uh, it looked like Oriana just caught Nidalee out. She wasn't on... Uh, particularly that much health and Oriana's already finished her Athene's Unholy Grail here and that means she's going to have a lot of cooldown reduction there and that added uh, ability power and the magic resist as well don't forget that that's going to be uh, very crucial for uh, reducing the damage that Nidalee is going to be doing so Ricky Tan got himself a nice trade there in the mid lane puts himself even further ahead I mean even though Nidalee's got those two kills she's still so far behind on CS and now with a kill onto Oriana as well she goes back and finishes those sorcerer's shoes and that means she's gonna have even more uh, damage with that added magic penetration the question is though how important is each of those mid laners to their kind of respective team compositions the fact that Nidalee is actually now pretty much roughly equal with uh, with Oriana on gold is interesting to me. I mean, it is a little bit surprising actually just because um, you wouldn't think that that would add up maths-wise, but uh, I think maybe the fact she had built that Cage's Lucky Pick earlier to build that Morella Nomicon uh, may have had something to do with that. But, as I say, it, it Nidalee right now is very, very important to Trick's playstyle here. 
They are clearly going for a poke, split push, and a disengage comp. They have got Janna for disengage. They've got Shen for split push. They've got Nautilus. If they ever want to make an engagement happen, which does obviously happen if you poke your opponents down low enough, and they have that uh, Ezreal who is also going to be kind of doing double duty as a poke and almost as a disengage. He's very, very strong at kiting. He doesn't actually need all that much gold to do it. Obviously, he has got that Spirit of the Elder Lizard already, which will give him a small slow, but I'd expect to see him pick up the... Um, Sheen and hence the Iceborne Gauntlet later, which will make him very difficult to close on. That's going to be... It's going to be basically tricked just looking to have Shen push top all day long, poke mid, or, or bot, whichever, and then obviously they just wait, basically. That's all they need to do. They need to wait until uh, until uh, Isuba makes something wrong happen, frankly, because they just don't really have the means to to actually force an engagement i suspect they're going to be re very reliant on that java and oriana combo and obviously if nidalee is very farmed up getting a decent amount of gold that's going to be super super scary and heard in now i'm keeping an eye on this there is a sunfire cape shen which is more damage than you would expect at this stage so lugi is waiting in the side we have got the spear coming through the tri brush we did check it out in case there was a in case there was a java so they may not know that he's there but i think they suspect because it would be very surprising if Herdin were to stick around with no um, actual support there. So, it does look like it's going to be a three-on-three -three situation here. Creep Wave is going to hit. We have got the spears coming out. We have got Nidalee jumping away again, doing a little bit of damage. We have got another spear now. Herdin taking damage. It does just look like they're going to be forced off this tower here, Stress. Yeah, and they did a great job of shutting down Herdin early. As we were saying going into this game, Renekton is such a difficult champion to uh, pretty much bully out of lane. We were expecting around level 6. It's exactly what happened. The Jezzes came up to that top lane, made sure they picked up the kill, and they've kept Renekton at 0 and 2. And the CS lead has only been... It, well, it's now only down to about 7. It was a little bit larger earlier, but... There's a turret going down in uh, the... Looked like it was in the mid lane that swung around to, and... Uh, they did a great job, as I said, shutting Renekton down, and Renekton hasn't really been able to start his the ball rolling. Shen picked up that Sunfire Cape uh, fairly early on, and we saw a couple of trades between Renekton and Shen, and it actually started going Shen's way. And that's what's led us to this pressure but at the tower. It is on about half health, and with Oriana there, they're clearing the wave very, very quickly. You get the command attack and that uh, dissonance as well. It's going to go through the wave uh, so, so quick, but... Looks like Tricked want to regroup. It looks like their pressure at the tower isn't quite working out how they'd like it to, so they want to apply pressure perhaps somewhere else on the map. Yeah, and now both of the top laners have picked up a Sunfire Cape, which is actually pretty huge because both of them have committed to a heavy armor item. We actually got Jarvan going in on Nautilus. He has put down the gold makes, has put down the knockup. Does look like the rest of the team is there. We have got Cataclysm going in, forcing the flash, and we have also got the ult from Ezreal going across all of the team, and it does look like they're going to be chasing this down. Nautilus now is there. He has got that anchor. He has got that depth charge, but he has not got the range. He isn't going to be able to catch up by the looks of it, but they do win that fight. They do force off the fight from Isuba, and now they are pressuring in that mid lane. I'm going to be interested to see if they can take this tower down. Yeah, and they've got the advantage here. Shen has Stand United available, so if they choose to fight this, this will be a 5v4, whereas Renekton's going to have to walk it down from the top lane. But he's very, very conscious of his tower going down as well. Even if he does walk, he's only about half health, so he's very conscious of that happening. And these Nidalee Spears coming out from the side are just keeping Isuba pushed all the way over to the opposite side of the lane here. And uh, tricked, just finding themselves a position to siege up. There is a ward in that bush, so Nidalee's not going to be able to get around behind them too, too easily, but it looks like she uh, nearly finds a shot crosses between the two of them. And All tricked. it's going to take... Sorry? Sorry. No. Uh, no. No, no, after you. We can, we can tell we're both British here. Well, I was just going to say, Tricked seem to have found some sort of momentum, and uh, Nezralas is pushing on towards that tower in the top lane, so he will be available, as I said, for that stand United if they do decide to fight anything here. Turret has gone down, so they've already got a net gain in this engagement. How will they choose to fight this? Wills gets stunned by that short immobilize from the uh, vault from Quinn, by the looks of things. Does fall, and Tricked are on the retreat, but they did pick themselves up a tower, so a tower for a kill. Uh, you know, they'll take that exchange, but it does leave the dragon open. 
Yeah, that's going to put them a little bit ahead on goal, but what we saw there is the difficulty that they're going to have engaging on this tricked composition. Frankly, their Neil's got a little bit too cocky, got a little bit caught out, and obviously did pay for it with his life. It's actually an interesting point though here, because Trick will be playing such a passive, such a defensive, such a kite oriented comp, having Valor available, having that really high movement speed character might actually be a method of engaging for um, for Isuba because you can just have that guy running right into the middle carrying the Oriana ball and that will actually enable fights pretty well. He can uh, he will obviously be putting himself in a very risky position there but in a situation like that where he's just chasing down one person that might actually work better than Jarvan going for the engagement and let it not be said that you know anything is ever going to be a that let it not be said frankly that he isn't brave essentially for doing that but um it's going to be interesting to see if they can utilize that more often. Uh, it is obviously, as I say though, putting your AD carry on the front line and, and AD carries are woke to suddenly blow up if they're on the front line, but it's going to be it's going to be interesting, actually. Yeah, it's still a tricky one because Quinn is going to be very, very squishy, so I'm not sure that they'll exactly uh, be going with a, a, a Quinn engage. I, I can see perhaps where that might work but the thing is with uh, Ezreal accelerating very quickly towards what I'm going to assume is next that Iceborne Gauntlet even with that added move speed from Vault it's going to be a little bit tricky to find that kind of angle whereas uh, you know they got a Javan he can just kind of just slam dunk his way into the fight with that Oriana ball on so that's how I'm kind of expecting these team fights to play out they haven't really had one that's gone that way quite yet and if uh, Ezreal does get to a point where he's got that Iceborne Gauntlet it's going to be tricky to uh, not shut somebody down, but Javan goes on towards Niels here, and Niels just kind of gives him a mystic shot, and makes him turn around. That uh, spirit of Elder Lizard is going to burn uh, for that extra three seconds on hit, so it's a little bit deceptive how much damage that Blue Build Ezreal does right now, uh, because you kind of expect an Ezreal to just deal. Not only that missed wow, you saw the spear land onto Quinn there, wasn't quite able to damage it, but yeah, essentially what I'm trying to say is it's less upfront damage, but you kind of get more overtime damage with Ezreal blue build. Yeah, at this stage of the game that's certainly true, but when you hit like 3-4 after before they carry actually top, we've got Hurden getting knocked up. He is actually just, a, uh, just about alive, wasn't he? Taunted instead, sorry. Getting stunned down, but he is now going to be trying to put some distance between him and Chen. Shen actually goes for the kill though, and now he's just going to stick around. Longi, Lugi, sorry, Sir Lugi, cannot put down the damage necessary to take out that Sunfire Cape. And now we have Nautilus in the mid lane. We have the Orianna ball, we have the Orianna Shockwave coming down, and it is a potential engage here. We have got Ricky Chan following this up. He is going to be putting down a little bit. That was actually put down the flash in return. Elocrats going to have to get out of dodge, but it does look right now like Tricked are just pressuring in every lane simultaneously. Yep, again, another uh, another advantage there from Tricked. Shen managed to pick one up in the top lane for himself as well, and they took down that mid tower with pretty much only three defending that, and Orianna, uh, Sona, and Quinn. While they've got a lot of damage between them, they're not really tanky enough to fight the kind of sustained fight that Tricked would be looking for. They're very much so everybody needs to be in that fight with all of their ultimates in order for them to do quite what they need to. At the moment though we see Tricked are about 4,000 gold in the lead. Six kills up to two with four towers over the one for Isuba. Tricked started off a little bit shaky in their laning phase and they've kind of found their rhythm a little bit but there's still a CS advantage on that Orianna in the mid lane and uh, the more this game goes on if Orianna can hit those shockwaves onto multiple members of Tricked this game might start to turn back in favour of Isuba but for right now there's a little bit of that lull period that we've seen in this game when three towers are down I know obviously with that middle tower down it's a little bit different to what we're normally seeing, but they are chasing on towards Quinn. She's forced into Valor form. Will they be able to catch on for the kill? Two Shot Barrage doesn't quite hit. Nice avoid from Valor there with that added movement speed. But uh, I'm kind of expecting this one to go until Dragon spawns again. 
Yeah, we are actually seeing the poke from Trick, though, and it's really starting to burn. Actually, Nautilus as well, split pushing in that bottom lane. is going to be forcing the creep wave into the tower. Obviously, Nautilus doesn't do a particularly job of taking down towers, but he does give creep waves pretty effectively, and now he's roaming more towards that mid lane. Is going to be potentially looking for this kill. He has got Ricky Town in, in his sights, but obviously not going to be happening. But while all this is happening, while Trick are doing all this circus maneuvering around the enemy jungle, we still got Shen, and he is still really pushing Renekton around. So it looks like you know, you Isuba are just going to go for the engage, whether they like, whether they kind of, they might sacrifice their top tower for this, but they are going to go for it. I think they have got the ball on Jarvan. He is going to go in. Cataclysm goes down. We have actually out of range of the ball, though, so Shockwave does not get used at all. Lugi now in the middle, and the engage comes in from Tricked here. We have got the Shockwave going down. We have got Ezreal getting pulled into position, but Shenault is coming down. We have now got Sam United in, and it does look like have come out ahead even in this direct engage and now it's an it's a numbers advantage and they've got angry Shen with the taunt actually going in on Herdin we have actually got that follow up now from Trashy gonna be landing that anchor gonna be landing that staggering blow but I don't think they're gonna be actually able to take him out here they are gonna back out we have got the mini stun coming in from carry me Johnny this fight is not ending they're going to just keep putting down some poke blinding strike comes out and we have got this follow up carry me Johnny looking for the engage but Towers go down, and I feel like Trick came out on top again. Yeah, and Isuba engaged that with the Cataclysm coming out from Jarvan, which you'd expect to be a great engage. That's what you'd expect out of this comp. As uh, Jess is, I don't know whether you caught that on stream, but you tried to pounce it at the wall and didn't quite make it. Sorry, I, I can't help but laugh a little bit at that. But using that pounce to his advantage, Cataclysm landed on Nidley and Ezreal only. And those are the two people on the Trick lineup that are pretty good at escaping that. You saw the arcane shift come out from Ezreal and the pounce as well, straight out of that cataclysm. So really just Jarvan did nothing but zone his entire team away and provided actually disengage for Trick. They managed to re-engage a little bit, disengaged again with the monsoon, re-engaged on top of it with that taunt. So that's, they kind of uh, favor these prolonged team fights as opposed to the burst team fights. And Herdin's gonna try and get himself something up in this top lane by taking down that tower. I don't think Shen's quite gonna be able to uh, shove him off before that rather large minion wave takes it down alongside, but he is gonna try and take him out up here in this top lane, Ezreal on his way up, but it looks like Herdin just wants to back out. Yeah, I think he was hoping that Renekton would stick around and fight, but it does actually look like he is now potentially looking to stop that recall. Not going to be able to get it to happen, though. But the rest of Trick is now pushing in this mid lane. We have got Ezreal, who is back at the moment. We'll be heading out to join the rest of the team soon. Shen is just going to continue to split push. He will have his ultimate up in about 30 more seconds. So Trick most likely will play it a little more defensively for now. They don't want to get engaged on in a 4 on 5, but... For now, obviously, they are still ahead. They are still very capable of pushing out these lanes very quickly. And Shen is still bullying around Renekton. And this is really the biggest factor. Renekton is such a good duelist normally, but Shen is just absolutely pushing him around. It's level 17 to level 14, and he's now circling around behind Herdin here, who uh, is potentially going to be picking up most of these creeps. Yeah, but there we go. Just going to be backing on out. But we have also got spears and mystic shots and oh my look at Isuba they are taking so much damage from that poke we have got the Ezreal ult coming in it's gonna hit only one but we have got spears 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 hitting carry me Johnny he's gone so low with the grievous wounds on top of that Shen actually now has been engaging on Herdin who has been going a little bit low under that tower but it's just pressure all around from Trick they're just shoving in that mid tower they're using the heals they're taking down the top tower as well with that Shen tank and now it just looks like aha sir lugi is just going to nearly die from a spear because ow that was uh yeah that was a spear that took him very very low heightened sense is being used out from quinn and if you're using that in your own base it's not exactly the best position to be in relentless assaults now on two lanes out of trick lugi is going to try and get on but again the Cataclysm only landed onto one depth charge, came out and Trick manages to pick up the kill onto Valor. Now they're turning onto Sir Lugi. Look at the Iceborne Gauntlet kiting them around. Ricky Tam kind of just accepts his fate there. They managed to catch on for the double kill for Niels. And again, Cataclysm is just so difficult to land on this type of team. They've got so much mobility and that's going to be an inhibitor going down for Trick. I don't even know whether they'll stop this. They may just push in for the win. 
wouldn't be surprised to see them do that. They have nothing really to stop them. I don't know if they'll be able to win it on this one, but they will certainly take out one, probably take out the second Nexus Tower. And it looks like Herdin is actually going to be going down to Shen in the top lane. They are actually just going to go for the Nexus now. It looks like Isuba are just accepting their fate here because this was a really, really good performance out of Trick. I have to feel like maybe... I, do, I actually don't know how they were able to play it so well that they were ne pretty much never engaged upon except when they would already win. Yeah, um, it was a very shaky start out of Trick, though. They ended up putting themselves significantly far behind in lane, but the time, the moment in the game that it turned around was that engage on Renekton up in the top lane when Nidalee hit level 6. They managed to shut him down, make sure that they had the ability to roam around the lanes as well. I mean, even Ezreal got shut down hard by Quinn in the very early game, so a great comeback performance from Trick to take full control of the game going into the mid game. We are going to be back very shortly, guys, with game number two. Remember to stick with us here on the Chaos TV channel. Tweet us as well. I'm at Dignitas Stress. Tweet at Spuddington and at Chaos TV. Let us know your thoughts on the series and who you think is going to win. We will be back in just a couple of minutes with game two.